Okay, so this morning when I turned the computer on, I, I have my little sort of notification up in the Creative Cloud desktop um, indicator on my top bar of my display telling me that we got some updates. Yes, and we got an update for Lightroom and we got an update for Camera Raw. So, of course, I just open up my panel and I go to install apps and I can see I've got updates. So I just selected update all and went off downstairs for my brekkie. Yes, I did. And, of course, when I come back, um, things are looking rather exciting because I thought, well, let's go and have a look what's going on in Lightroom. And I have Lightroom down in my dock. Don't forget, I'm on a Mac. So whether this applies to Windows people or not, I don't know. And um, I just went and clicked on Lightroom and I thought, oh, the application Adobe Lightroom Classic CC can't be opened. And I'm thinking, whoops. So, of course, we go, OK, and we try it again. And, of course, we get the same message. And, uh, yeah, I was a little bit confused for all of about three seconds. Um, they've changed the app itself. So, of course, we go to Install Apps and we go to Lightroom Classic. And, uh, yeah, now you can see it's opening. And this is just a little help because I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had this problem. And of course, if we come down to the dock, we can see we've got the new Lightroom Classic down here in the dock. And if we right click and tap on that, we can go options and we can say keep in dock. And then we can just sort of drag it over here and put it next to Photoshop. And uh, yeah, so that's it. So of course, if I now go and quit Lightroom Classic and I go yes and skip if I come down to me dock and I click on this new icon here of course it'll open up and run so the one thing I wanted to talk about I've not had a chance to go through and see all the updates that we've got um, but I know the one key thing is over in the develop module and it's in the basics panel, the adjustments brush, and the um, graduated filters that you can bring in. And it's this under presence, and it's this texture slider. Yeah, um, we haven't made any improvements whatsoever to the um, actual initial demosaic and algorithm. It's still throwing way too much um, contrast into a scene. But if I just go and click on my normal process version swap and then come in and turn my exposure up and I might as well just go and turn my contrast back up on this. And let's just have a look at this texture slider and let's see what it does now. Bear in mind this is a 100 ISO shot exposed pretty much spot on. And let's just turn it up to the max whoa yes that's a bit crunchy isn't it and you'll notice where i had no noise before i've now got noise so straight away this tells me this is just either it's got a little bit of pre-sharpening built into it or it is a contrast adjustment and really and truly i think it's an edge contrast adjustment this texture a little bit like clarity but not quite the same and clarity's always had its shortcomings for me so straight away i'm quite excited about this texture slider even though it looks bloody hideous at the moment um, i'm quite excited about it because it's like clarity but slightly different so anything that's a slight deviation from an existing adjustment i quite like um, let's just dial this back to zero and the only important thing in this shot really is the compound texture in this um, com in this in the eye of this common data dragonfly and um, let's just be sensible with this texture slider and yeah it's looking quite nice but I, I can still see that I am increasing noise um, let's go into a um, sort of a 4 to 1 view 
and sort of scroll down and look at this background noise if I turn this texture slider off and then sort of build it up a little bit we can see what's happening and yes it is picking up this noise so on a shot like this really and truly the global texture um, enhancement isn't really a good idea but of course we've got it inside the adjustment brush so uh, if I just lift up the size of the adjustment brush a little bit and uh, I'll just take the auto mask off and of course I can start to build up the contrast within this compound eye structure and if we take it back to a one-to-one -one view um, we can really start to pull out uh, the texture of that compound eye and I, I actually think that looks quite good we can't really see it unless we actually turn it off and then turn it back on again off on I am liking that it's subtle and I hope to god the video can put can pick that up let's try it on a two to one view and uh, let's just go and turn the brush off and then back on again off and then back on again there we go and yeah I'm quite liking that so nice one Adobe let's just see um, how much it works or how well it works on this shot now this is a shot of a I'm pretty certain it's a Langer monkey and um, comes from one of my patreons um, Steve and uh, yeah a nice shot um, let's just bring it out to a one-to-one -one view far too much contrast in it um, and yet we've got quite a good looking histogram far too much contrast in it lost detail up here simple answer process version swap and then turn the exposure back up lovely jubbly now let's go and have a look at this texture slider because we've got lots of interesting texture in the facial skin of uh, this monkey and if we turn it up um yeah now bear in mind this shot of steve's is at two and a half thousand iso um, shot with a 200 400 cannon on a 1dx mark ii at 560 mil so this has got the internal 1.4 teleconverter built into it and you know we expect to see some noise now I'm actually not quite liking the look of this um, increased texture here and also just look at the level of noise in the background and if we turn that texture slider off now we've got a lot less we haven't got a lot less noise in the background but it's less apparent so makes me just wonder if we go negative on this texture slider just a little bit and I really do like how it's softened off the noise in the face and it's also softened off the noise in the background as well and um, yeah it, it's a you know you can balance that with a little bit of positive clarity and then a little bit of negative dehaze and look at this you see how we how we can play with these three sliders now and we can come up with something that's really nice look how much detail we can see on these um, nasal furrows here sort of where his sinuses would be right at the top of the face we can see a lot more detail in there let's just put that dehaze slider back to zero and it's the DA slider that's got the power there yeah to reveal the internal shadow components uh, of this image but really and truly it's been helped by the positive clarity which is negative positive clarity and negative dehaze can work exceptionally well together and now we've got this extra little bit of um wiggle room to play with with this texture slider and just as the texture slider in a positive direction helped the ISO 100 shot, now in a negative direction it's actually helping the high ISO shot. 
So yeah, I'm all for it. I think it's brilliant. Nice one, Adobe. Um, if I now come to um, this uh, rather whoa, moody atmospheric landscape shot, um, yeah, now one of the, or the, if you like, the foreground component of this shot is uh, this raw file here. And um, it's just, uh, it, it's on the edge of sharpness, yeah? It's on the edge of sharpness. If we just go and have a look at how much sharpening we've got dialed in on it, we've got none. So I will actually put the default sharpening on and then I'll drop the radius and I might lift the detail up towards up towards the top right hand value of 100. So we're, we're approaching full single iteration deconvolution sharpening. Um, let's just go and see what happens here with a global um, texture, uh, appli a global application of the texture slider. Um, let's just move it to the right. Only going to take it to 25, and that to me is fabulous um, because it's actually helped emphasize the sharpness it's not added more sharpness it's just helped to emphasize um, a little bit of sharpness and of course if we just bring in a little bit of negative dehaze that just helps to open up those shadows and i am quite impressed and don't forget that's all on raw files um, if we bring um, this tiff in which is basically a finished archival image if I now go and increase the texture slider on that, whoa, and we'll just come in and put a little bit of negative DAs on that, and that's really opened up um, the face of this boulder uh, in the foreground. And really and truly, I can't um, say enough about this texture slider. It's not, I don't think it's going to be a tool um, that I'll use perhaps in the way that Adobe intended because I get the feeling Adobe have intended this slider if we come back to Steve's shot I think they've intended this slider to be used um, in this direction yeah which for the instant gratification brigade um, in other words the non-pixel peepers the non-printers if you like um, this is going to be really good because it really does emphasize the sharpness but it's over sharpened or it gives the impression of being over sharpened now so if i was to come down to the details panel i would really have to start turning down the sharpness and even now it looks a little bit over sharpened which is um not really where I would want this shot to be so um, you know I mean it is what it is it's a very very useful little tool that we can use in conjunction with let's go back to this shot of Steve's let's just go reset again and go and do a process version swap like that and then we'll come back to the basics panel we'll put all the exposure in and then let's just take that out let's just take out a little bit of dehaze and then add some clarity in and to me that looks a lot better than if we just turn the texture slider up but anyway listen it's all a matter of personal taste and um, yeah you go use the tool out in whatever way makes you happy and um, i personally have put this video up to tell you that uh, I really rate the addition of this texture slider and it's going to help me out in all my images not just landscapes not just wildlife but everything really where you just get that little mm, things look a little bit overly contrasty or they look a little bit overly sharp when we have this new clarity slider and new DA slider put in um, a few months ago, 
I mean, I got really excited about the use of um, positive clarity and negative dehaze, and now we've got this texture slider in. It just makes what was a dynamic duo into a dynamic trio, and I'm really liking it. So, Adobe, big thumbs up from me. Great stuff. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you found it useful and you're not a subscriber, go click the subscribe button, click the ringity tingity bell uh, to get a notification next time I've got put a video up. And uh, until said next time, I shall see thee in the immortal words of Sir Freddie Truman. It's uh, becoming cricket weather over here in the UK. Yay! See you later, guys. Toodaloo.